Greetings, JC Pilter here, and this is the Age of Ornon Vlog. Well, alrighty, today I'm going to review the film that's just come out, God's Not Dead. Uh, this is a movie about a Christian who goes to a university and is challenged by his professor, who is an atheist, uh, to defend the idea that God exists. Now, when I first heard about this movie, I was pretty excited, yet I was at the same time a little bit skeptical. It's not that I disagree with the premise of the film or anything, uh, but knowing that it was going to take place in a philosophy class, and that I, seeing that I really liked philosophy and took every class I could on it, I knew how the argument was going to go, and I'm not a huge fan of the way it went. Now, I'm just going to stop right there, and before I get too far into my review, I would like to say that I did like the movie a lot, and I stress this because I'm going to be pretty brutal in my uh, dealing with it. But to keep things a little more positive, I'm going to begin with the downsides of this film first so that I can end it up with the things I actually liked about it. Well, the first weakness of this film uh, was the fact that the main character says that he's going to put God on trial. Now, I found that a little, uh, well, it's counter-biblical because it says in Luke 4.12 that we are not to put God to the test. We should remember that God is judge, and we should therefore not be judging him. And so we're kind of switching the order that God has ordained by saying that. But unfortunately, this is the way that the movie moves forward in this debate. Instead of using the Bible as a starting point, Josh Wheaton, the main character, uses philosophy and science and mostly ignores the scriptures. This causes some people to ask, well, what's the problem with this? Well, the problem is, is that if our starting point is our own ability to reason, we will never reach the point of salvation. No one gets saved apart from the name of Jesus. As it says in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12, For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Philosophy and reason will never get us to that point. What this movie attempts to do is prove philosophically that God does exist, and it does a pretty good job of doing that. The problem is it only argues for God in a general sense, and not for the Christian God, and specifically, God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. At the end of the film, when everybody raises from their chairs and says, God's not dead, the problem with this is the only thing that really is accomplished is moving atheists or people on the fence to a view of theism, and not necessarily Christianity. Some people would say, well, isn't this a good thing? At least theism's better than atheism, right? Well, not really. I mean... There are going to be probably more theists in hell than atheists, because there have been more people who believe in God than atheists, by a long shot. But with regard to theists, James, the brother of Jesus, writes in the book of James 2, in verse 19, he says, Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe, and they tremble. What James is saying is that belief in God only makes you equal with the devil. And in order for a person to be saved, we must start with the Bible and preach Jesus, not philosophy. The second issue I found with this movie is that there is an argument used that the Big Bang is what the verse, let there be light, would have looked like. Well, this is unfortunately absolutely false. There's no room in scripture for the Big Bang. To keep this review brief, I will link an article in the description that will flesh that out more for you. But while it is true that God, in a general sense, could use the Big Bang to create, uh, it's also true that the God of the Bible would not and could not have used the Big Bang. Another closely related issue in this movie uh, with regards to this is they say that God could have used the process of evolution to create. Once again, this doesn't fit with scripture. It's nowhere found in the text. And so the God of the Bible did not use evolution at all. God generally, talking about you know some God that doesn't exist, that's not the God of the Bible. Yeah, I can see that. But evolution is outside the character, the nature, and the scriptures of God. If you get any child to read the book of Genesis and then learn about evolution, they will know that those two do not go hand in hand. One final objection that I had with this movie was the gospel presentation at the end. I was very glad to see that there was a gospel presentation. After all, any time that Christians do anything, it really should have the gospel at the center. The problem is, it was really kind of weak. Um, I was very glad to see that they mentioned sin, because that's often dropped today, and how can a person know he can be, needs to be saved, and how can we understand the good news, apart from the bad news, that our sin is, is separated us from God, and that we're going to be judged 
and held accountable for that. Uh, but unfortunately, while they mention sin, they drop repentance. They don't ever mention it in their presentation. And unfortunately, this is an epidemic in gospel presentations today. There is really no salvation apart from repentance. If you don't repent, you can't be saved because uh, without repentance, you're not really turning from your sin. You're saying, yeah, God, I'm sorry for my sins, but I'm going to keep on doing them. And while it's true we'll never be perfect, we should repent and desire and strive to separate ourselves and live more holy lives. And so by leaving out repentance, they are leaving out a very key you know, part of the gospel. This is one of those issues that we have a lot in the church where we're seeing people get saved, and yet just a short distance down the road, they fall away. Uh, oftentimes this is because they never really repented. They tried belief in Jesus, but they never repented for their sins, and that's why they fall away. These sort of people were really never saved to begin with. I'm not saying that a person couldn't get saved by watching this movie, but it would probably be in reaction to some other uh, more thorough, better presentations of the gospel that the person heard before built on top of this movie. So to lump it all together, the weaknesses with this film um, is really that there's too much respect for man, too little respect for God, we shouldn't be in the position of telling God that he had to use evolution or the Big Bang or any other pagan idea. Uh, we should not think so highly of ourselves as to think that our own reason could lead us to salvation. But this is really kind of almost what this movie tends to do a little too much. Now, with all that said, there are still things that I liked about the movie. In fact, a lot that I did. Um, I thought it was incredibly well made. Uh, if it was possible to watch this movie and somehow not understand that it was Christian, you would still see, you know, quality-wise, you would see no difference between it and a secular movie today. Um, the acting was amazing, the writing was top-notch, and it was a very intricate story with a lot of different things going on, but it all linked together seamlessly for a very good-to-watch film, very easy-to-watch film. I have to give kudos to Kevin Sorbo, who uh, did an amazing job of playing Jeffrey Radisson, the atheist professor. The whole time I was watching him perform, I'm sitting there asking myself, Modek, Gwen, or Frederick? To understand what I'm saying here, you have to read The Age of Ornon. Shameless plug. In light of that, I have to say uh, that Professor Radisson was probably my favorite part of this film, and uh, I felt somewhat guilty having to say my favorite character is the atheist. But you know what? Uh, he played the character very well. He was The character was well written, very deep, probably the most complex character in the whole movie. Uh, at the end of the movie, Radisson does become a Christian, and this is actually one of the few places where I see a lot of Christians react to, and they say uh, it's not realistic for a guy who hates God so much to get saved in the context that he did. Um, and I just want to say, let's not limit the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can soften any heart, and so um, I'm not going to say that certain people are impossible to be saved because, I mean, we don't know that. Uh, it's really showing a disrespect for the power of the Holy Spirit to say, this man could not be saved in a certain situation. We don't know. For another good review that goes a little deeper in detail on this movie, uh, I've provided a link below. This review from Answers in Genesis I think is pretty good, and I think it explains a little better the Big Bang and evolution issues that were in this movie so that you can get a better understanding of it. But in the end, I really have to say I was amazed at how good Christian filmmaking is becoming. And I have to say, good job to Pure Flix, the, the people who made this. If they need a new project to work on, and they want to make the world's first epic Christian film trilogy, then I have a little suggestion for them. I don't know. Maybe the Age of Orna? Oh well. God bless. You have a great day.